I've got this really unusual pudding to show you. It originates from the south of France, down in Nice. It has some quite unusual ingredients in it. One of them is chard. It's called tourte de blette. And it's wonderful. The first thing to do is soak the raisins. These have been soaking for a couple of hours now in cider brandy, which is the most fantastic thing. It's like an English Calvados. And they've plumped up and they're nice and soft and they've got a real, real flavour to them. Next thing to do is make the pastry. A fairly simple sweet pastry, okay? We're gonna make it in the food processor. Plain flour. Icing sugar. And a little pinch of salt. A little mix like so. For the pastry, you'll need 300 grams of plain flour, 50 grams of icing sugar, and 175 grams of chilled butter. Blitz everything to the texture of fine crumbs. Then add an egg yolk. And just enough cold water to bring the pastry together. When the dough's just coming together, if you tip it out, this is going to go into the fridge for about half an hour to an hour, just to chill and relax. So my pastry's resting, I'm going to prepare the chard. For this recipe, we're going to just use the leaf. So it involves stripping off the stalk. So we need the leaves from a kilo of chard, roughly. The chard's going to go into the sink. Some fresh cold water just to get a good wash. Straight into a pan, on the heat. No water, just the water that's been washed off. While the chard's steaming down over there, I'm just going to toast these pine nuts in a dry pan. Just brings out a little bit more flavour. Keep an eye on your pine nuts. They're the sort of thing that burn really quickly. The chard. Oh, it's lovely and tender. Just like spinach. There's quite a lot of water and chard when you cook it. So it needs to sit in this colander and cool down before we squeeze out the liquid. While that's happening, all the other bits need to be put together in a mixing bowl. I'm going to need two apples. Of course, it's fantastic juice, but we don't want a soggy pastry. So we're going to squeeze that juice out. On top of that, I'm going to put the zest of one lemon. These lovely soft boozy raisins are going in on top of the apple. And you can see the layers of flavour starting to build up. The boozy raisins, our sweet toasted pine nuts, that fragrant lemon, and of course the star of the tart, the chard. And just like the apples, squeeze out the juice. Squeeze the chard into a tight ball to extract all the water, roughly chop, and then add to the mixing bowl with the rest of the ingredients. A little bit of caster sugar turns what could be classed as a savoury dish into a put. And I'm going to add two eggs just to bind it as the tart bakes in the oven. Give them a whisk and then they go straight in to the chard method. And the last thing is to combine everything probably by hand, the best tool for the job. Mix in the egg. What's so interesting about this filling is the unusual ingredients that go into it. There's no getting away from the fact that you're putting chard in a pudding. But it does work so well. So that's the mix done. All that's left to do now is roll out the pastry. Make sure your surface is well floured to stop it sticking. Using a sharp knife, cut your pastry in half. One half will make up the base of the tart and we'll use the other for the lid. So you're trying to achieve a rough circle here. Okay. Then use your rolling pin to place your pastry base onto a medium cake tin. Sweet pastry is always a little bit more delicate than a savoury pastry because of the sugar content and the slightly higher fat content. So when you're working it, be particularly careful. It doesn't want to warm up too much either. So this is going to be the lid. So that's our lid. So it's ready to fill up. I'm just going to carefully distribute the filling around the tart. And look how gorgeous it looks. I love that dark emerald green of the chard. 
and the texture that you're creating for those pine nuts and the soft raisins. You can see why it's such a charming recipe to make. Brush the ridges of the pastry base with egg yolk. This will create a strong seal for your pastry lid, which you simply roll over the top of the tart. Crimp the sides of your tart gently with your fingers and then use your rolling pin to flatten off the sides. I'm just going to cut a little hole just in the middle, just to let a little of the steam out, okay? Tiny egg wash, just give it that fantastic golden colour, straight in the oven, half an hour, 180 degrees C. Keep an eye on it, you don't want it to go too golden on top. Thirty minutes later, and a dusting of icing sugar adds a final flourish to this beautiful tort de blet. It's full of flavour and full of texture. The pine nuts, the lemon, it's very fragrant, but it's the chard that is so wonderful. Really, really, really delicate. Great.